All right. Well, joining us on the Miami Marlins Hot Stove Show tonight, one of the newest members of the Miami Marlins organization in what's becoming a revamped side of the baseball operations department under the leadership of Peter Bendix. Gabe Kapler, one of the newest members and assistant general manager of the Miami Marlins, joining us on the Marlins Hot Stove Show tonight. Gabe, I, I, you are a recognizable face. You are a recognizable name. You have spent decades in this game, front office as a player, a world champion, National League Manager of the Year. Welcome to Miami. And before I ask you anything about all of this, are you enjoying Miami? I know you've traveled a lot over the course of your life. I'm learning a lot about Miami, Kyle. So I'm currently staying in Brickell. Uh, I've been there for about three weeks and I've got an Airbnb that's probably going to take me through the middle of February when we're all going to head to to Jupiter. Anyhow, what I've learned about Brickell is beautiful, beautiful space, very busy. And the Airbnb that I'm currently in is very transient. So it always feels like people are coming and going. I think my speed is going to be like Wynwood. I'm, I love <laughs> art. Um, and, and in particular, I love street art. And so I just want to get slightly outside of Brickle. Although I think I'll be spending quite a bit of time in Brickle. But net net overall, really enjoying Miami, really enjoying spending time outside in the middle of the winter. Well, Gabe, and we're thrilled to have you uh, as a member of the Marlins organization. Look, I, I just prefaced it a little bit. Um, go back. You, you were a long, late, late draft pick, developed into a big leaguer, became a world champion, went to the Dodgers front office after your playing career as the director of player development, turned into a manager, a National League manager of the year. Now you find yourself in Miami as an assistant general manager. I'll try to put this on a tee for you, but why? Why now? Why in 2024? Is this the right fit for Gabe Kapler? Full disclosure, I had no plans of, of working in baseball this year. Uh, the Giants, like just going to be very honest, the Giants were paying me. My plan was to travel, eat, write about it, you know, find myself in in really cool locations. I even had visions of driving this, this adventure van that I built from Calgary, Canada, down to the tip of South America. So I, that was where my mind was and Peter called and asked if I wanted to have a conversation and I figured it would do no harm to, to come to Miami and, and sit down with him. So we ended up sitting down and, and really hitting it off. And, um, I felt like we had an aligned vision. I thought his was extremely open-minded, um, and wanting to do things a little differently here. And that has a lot of different definitions, but just at the at the basic level, it's are there ways that we can be a little bit different so that we can gain competitive advantages? And are there ways that we can be really supportive of one another um, and really lean into reaching our hands out to take people with us on this journey? And a lot of the things that he was saying really meant a lot to me uh, about you know where he saw this organization going and developing and uh, being as competitive as possible for a very long period of time. So uh, that vision and that mission was compelling enough for me to want to take this leap and and kind of go all in. And so uh, since that point, I've been been here in Miami helping Peter and others uh, build things out. And uh, it's it's been a lot of work, a lot of fun, and and I'm excited about what's to come. Gabe, Steven Strom here. I appreciate you uh, joining us and carving out some time. Just as an assistant GM, it's kind of a broad name. What are your roles and responsibilities? I think support is is number one. Um, I really want to be able to support Peter's vision for this organization. I want to be able to support Skip and everything he's trying to accomplish in, in the Major League Clubhouse. But even more granularly on a, on a smaller or um, maybe on a more specific scale, we have a team dietitian and and a minor league nutrition that we need to to get up to speed and so supporting that group and then you know supporting the other AGMs and the and the goals that they're trying to accomplish we have a new d director of baseball operations and I want to be able to support Vinesh and, and all the things that he's trying to accomplish I would say that my best role as an AGM right now is to support the missions and the visions of other people are around me and, and use my experience to sometimes push, but do two things in equal parts, support and, and raise the bar along the way. All right. I want to talk about one of your best attributes and that's player development with the names are listed. Why do you think you're able to resonate and foster with these players so well? Um, well, 
Kyle had mentioned getting drafted pretty late, right? I was a 57th round draft pick in the 1995 draft. So what that means to be drafted in, in the 57th round is essentially you're a roster filler. You're coming to an organization to almost like protect prospects and take down innings and at bats that they're they're not likely to take down. But you're you're sort of an afterthought at that point. I didn't know that as a 57th round draft pick. I figured I'd just be thrown in to the mix with the first round picks and I'd have equal opportunity that they had. And I think that mindset served me very well. And the way it served me well is I played well and that got me more opportunity. And, and three years later, I was the number one prospect in the Detroit Tigers organization. So what that did for me in terms of being able to connect with players is pretty obvious. I could see the game from their vantage point, from the vantage point of a 57th round pick or like a late round draft pick, from the vantage point of a number one prospect in the organization, a starter on a on a um, championship caliber team, a, a World Series winner, a 25th man or now it would be 26th man on the roster, released, signed short term deals, signed, signed long term deals, played in platoon situations. And so there's not many players that I can't kind of get on their level and say, Hey, I've been in your shoes. Mm. The only one that I, I missed pretty wildly was like star player. So uh, <laughs> maybe a little bit more challenging for me to, to relate to the Mike Trouts and, and the Logan Webbs and the Giancarlo Stanton's, you know, that, that sort of caliber player, but most of the the major league players out there and the minor league players, you know, having, a real true love for player development. I can, I can see the game from their vantage point. Gabe Kapler joining us on the Miami Marlins hot stove show. Gabe, I hope this isn't too deep, but I'm curious as I hear you talk, like I, I wouldn't say your path, I, maybe it's uncommon, but you know, obviously late round draft pick, big leaguer, world champion, front office manager, this and that. Again, I hope this isn't too deep, but I, I think you're a very, very, very bright guy. And I've enjoyed watching you from afar. What have you most learned about yourself? Through, not throughout this entire journey for you for decades, but maybe over the last five to 10 years in the game, it's just ever changing all the time. Uh, the ga the game's changing all the time. It, it no. changes and it forces people to change in the way that yeah. they think about things. It's just fascinating to me. Um, so one thing that I've, I've learned and, I, and I've learned this at every stage of my career is that I have to be myself. Um, I, you know, I'm just going to share about, me um, and and how I have fit or not fit in this game. I've come to recognize that I am not a beige wall and that's okay. So if you, you know, you think about like a traditional AGM, I probably don't fit that mold. A traditional major league manager, I, I probably don't fit that mold either. Even as a player, I have maybe some belief systems that don't always fit in with a, a major league clubhouse by way of example. But what I continue to be struck with is I can only be myself. If I am authentic, I have strong opinions. I care about maybe some different things than, than everybody in the room. Sometimes that's going to serve me well, but sometimes it's not going to be easily accepted at first. And that's okay too. Uh, I just can't try to alter who I am and, and try to fit in in uh, an industry that really rewards people fitting in. So I think that's the, I'm fine with that. Like I'm, I'm just, I've, I've really come to terms over probably the last five years that I'm, I'm not the, I'm maybe more like a pink or a yellow or a, a bright blue wall rather than the beige one. And, and if that, you know, if that doesn't work, it, it doesn't work, but I'm not going to try to alter who I am to, to fit into the room. Wow. I could go deeper into the psychology of this. Um, I want to go to when you were managing San Francisco, you guys played the Marlins six times. You got a chance to see Jesus Lazardo, Sandy Alcantara, who was out this year, obviously with TJ Braxton Garrett, Trevor Rogers, Edward Cabrera, and, and just the plethora of talent there. What, stood out to you if you remember uh, about the Marlins at least last year uh I was impressed by how strong of a job Skip did in in close baseball games just pulled a lot of the right strings made a lot of the right moves had just like an excellent 
gut feel for what was happening in baseball games, but he used good information to make those decisions. And I could talk about individual players who I thought were especially tough at bats. And John Birdie was definitely in that mold. And and even though Jazz didn't didn't always have his best games against us, he always felt like a dangerous player, especially with a right-handed pitcher on the mound, somebody you probably want to stay away from in a, in a big situation. And, you know, you mentioned some of the the pitching. I mean, that's a, sort of the strength of of the Marlins in, in 23 and, and, and prior as well. And going into our, our 24 season, I think it's a real area of strength and in particular our starting pitching, even with Sandy, you know, not ready to go at the outset. And also who's betting against Sandy right now, right? This is a guy who is a fierce competitor, um, uber talented. And what I've already heard, like his workouts are, uh, a thing of beauty and and of legend. And I'm excited to, to get to know all of these players a little bit better. But if one thing stood out to me, it was a, just a great job that Skip did in, in close games. Gabe, last question for me, and I'll let Stephen take care of the rest here. Um, and I guess it's probably a two-part question. My first would be, what do you envision your spring training looking like? Are, are you a very communicative person where you'll be in the clubhouse every day, talking to players, getting to know people, and then during games, sitting behind home plate, from that development standpoint, watching them. And number two, once we roll into the regular season, do you foresee us seeing you around? Would you, do you, do you think you'll be in Beloit, Jacksonville, Pensacola, and Jupiter more? Uh, I think I'm going to be touching hopefully everywhere. I, I'd like to make at least a trip to our affiliates. Um, I want to be in Miami some more than anything else. I want to go where I'm, I'm most useful. Um, I, I will say this. I absolutely love adore player development. It's one of my favorite spaces. So my my goal is to be in in each of our spaces here. I, I definitely have a strong affection and desire to impact things internationally um, in the DR. I think there's space for digging into what what is currently in place in Venezuela, which just like many organizations is a fairly small presence, but it's a, a, a country that I'm fascinated by and want to learn as much as I can about. And I will definitely be around. In Jupiter, my my goal is to be where I'm most needed. Again, circling back to the theme, I, I just want to be a support system to the people that, that most need it right now. And so um, I will be opportunistic in how I travel. Gabe Kapler here on the Hot Stove Show. Steven Strom, Kyle Seeloff. Kazi, off the hot seat, can we uh, lighten it up just to end this thing? Uh, I'm done. Yes, sir. Okay. Can I, can I just say, I don't I don't think, um, for, for what it's worth, coming from San Francisco and Philadelphia, if that's the hot seat. Yeah, no kidding. This is going to get really This is easy. <laughs> um, you're a TikToker. Let's talk Irish goodbyes. Let's just, right, let's, let's end Irish it on, goodbyes. let's end it on Irish goodbyes, Gabe. Let's do it. Who uh, are you able? Is is anyone who was the person that gave the Irish goodbye? And if you were to do an Irish goodbye, what's what's the most successful way to do it? How do you do it? Well, well, first that person knows who that person is, <laughs> and I, I, I would not out anybody publicly like that. But as I mentioned, it it was not it was not well executed, <laughs> and and I didn't just save that for public consumption. I went right to the source and told that person exactly what I thought about their Irish goodbye. My my feeling on this is you're the, the whole idea is get out unnoticed. My oh my, my grandmother was an absolute champion at the Irish goodbye. Big family gathering and everybody's like where's grandma? That's it. She's just gone. So the concept that this person was noticed trying to slip out is that's why I was saying it's such a rookie move. The whole goal is like nobody should even notice it until like, you know, six hours later. So where did that person go? So I I don't want to like toot my own horn here, but I'm really good at this. It's one of my strongest features as an executive is slipping out of a room unnoticed. And if you guys ever want to like talk about the 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 true tips, like the granular stuff. Come by the office. I'll, I'll show you. How yes, to I do. do. Uh, yes, absolutely. I do. <laughs> so you you kind of have to like, it's like a dim the lights kind of thing. You're waiting till people are looking in the other direction. You're finding the right hallway. You need good exit strategies. Not, not anybody can do this, but I'm, I'm happy to 
to sort of develop people in this way, right? My, my um, like player development is my thing, but really Irish goodbye development is, is my, my sweet spot. Fascinating. We're going to leave uh, a, a little meat left on the bone and we might circle back around to this uh, about 14 games into spring training. You could swing by the booth and hang out with us for a couple of innings. But Gabe, I know I said it, but welcome to Miami. Um, I, I, I'm personally thrilled to see you here because I think you're an incredible baseball mind, uh, along with many others that are starting to round out the, the baseball, baseball operations side of the front office. So again, welcome to Miami. Thank you for the time and we'll chat with you soon. Thank you, Gabe. Wow, Steven, that was really cool. I appreciate you guys having me, and I look forward to our next conversation.